Hello there. In this tutorial I'm gonna show you how to trace an image into a cartoon using Photoshop. So, let's get started. Okay, first create a new file and enter the preferences you like. If you're not sure, you can copy mine. Press OK and then go to File, and place the image you want to trace. I will first resize the image. Make sure you hold the shift button in order to proportionally resize it. Click enter to place the image. Then I'm gonna create a duplicate of the layer. This duplicate I'm gonna resize and place in the left corner. It will stay there for the entire process. Now select the first layer and lower the opacity. Then create a new layer and double click on it to name it. Pick the darkest color from the palette and then select the pen tool on the left. Now we can start creating the lines. This tool we're gonna use the most. The idea is to create a shape by connecting the dots, then right click and fill the area. It takes some time to master the pen tool, so, practice. Because the whole process is relatively similar, I'm gonna speed up a little. After we finish with the lines, it's time to color the drawing. First I'm gonna create a new layer. I'm gonna name it skin. Then I'm gonna drag it a little bit down, just below the lines layer. Now select the lines layer, and then from the left panel select the magic wand tool. Click inside the lines, and then from the select menu. 
Click Modify, Expand, and then to 4. Then click OK. Now take the Paint Bucket tool from the left panel. Select the skin layer and then pick color for the skin. You can use the duplicate picture in the left corner as a reference point in order to pick more relevant color for the skin. After you choose a nice color, just click inside the lines. You'll have the selected shape colored. Now press Ctrl and D at the same time to deselect the area. Using the brush tool, fill the gaps on the skin layer. Clicking the right button on the mouse will pop out this box from where you can expand the brush size. Make sure there are no gaps in the sharp angles. If you find any, just select the brush tool again and fill them. Additionally, if there is color outside the lines, you can use the eraser tool. This tool works pretty much the same as the brush tool, but it does a different job. Now I'm gonna create a new layer for the eyes. This layer must be above the skin layer. Using the pen tool, I will select the area I want to color. Make sure you follow the lines properly, so you don't have to delete anything after. After selecting the shape, right-click on your mouse and choose, Fill Path, then press OK. After that, you can click Escape on your keyboard in order to hide the selection. For coloring shapes, you can use many tools, but the pen tool is the most precise one. On the same layer, I'm gonna color the teeth. After that I will finish the eyes using the brush tool. Now let's pick some lighter color for the bottom part of the eyes. This will make them look more realistic. After the eyes part is done, I will create a new layer for the lips. Remember to place these layers above the skin layer, but also below the lines layer. From the color picker, select a matching color. You can use the photo on left to get the exact same color. I will create an additional layer for the lips. This one is for lip shadows. Let's pick darker color. Feel free when selecting, because there's an option to stick this layer to the main one. Just hold down the Alt button, position the pointer over the line dividing two layers in the Layers panel, and then click. I will also add a layer for the lighter parts of the lips. But first, to get a better view of the shadows, I will duplicate the main image layer, set the opacity to 100, then using the brush tool I'm going to rasterize the layer because it's a smart object. Then I'll posterize the image.
You can set any value for the levels, but better stick to the lower numbers. I'll use the default value. On a new layer, I will finish the lips. Now the colors are more exposed and it should be easier for you to select shadows or light. You can add several levels of shadows, but don't get too much in details if you want a more cartoonish outcome. After finishing the lips, we can continue with the skin shadows. These are the most important ones as they will give the real look and shape of the face. So first click the skin layer, then create a new layer by clicking the little icon in the bottom right corner. You can name it whatever you want. Then inside the color picker, choose darker color than the skin. Next, hide the skin layer, and using the path tool select the darker parts from the posterized image. After you're done, you can enable the skin layer again, and then fill the path. If you're not happy with the current color, you can choose a new one in the color picker, and then right-click and fill the path again. Then stick the current layer on the skin layer. And then, create an additional layer for the darker shadows. Of course, pick a darker color. Then hide the skin layer again, and select the more darker parts. You don't have to follow the exact same shapes as on the posterize image. I tend to keep the shapes sharper, even if they aren't. Fill the path again and stick the layer. You can go with darker colors if you prefer to. They look better if you downsize the image. I will create one final layer for the shadows, then one additional layer for the light. What more shadow layers you add, the more realistic cartoon you'll get. The process is the same. After doing the shadows, it's time to add some light. You don't have to add the light, but I think it looks better with it. I will lower the opacity on this layer as the color is too light. I will also add another layer for the blue light, so the cartoon looks more close to the real photo.
Next, I will create a layer for the gums. After we're done with them, we can add a shadow for the teeth. Make sure you do it on a separate layer. I will create additional layer for the light reflection on the shirt. And finally I will do light reflection on the eyes. Just pick white color and using the brush tool add a little dots on the corner of the pupils. You can also adjust the previous layer afterwards, just like I'm doing. Additionally, we can add a layer for the beard. This will come as a green shadow, with lowered opacity. So first choose a dark green color, and after hiding the skin layers, follow the beard shape from the real photo. Now you can lower the opacity of your choice. We're almost done. One last thing I'm going to do, is, add a white background below the skin layer. Adding a plain background is simple as picking a white color from the palette, and clicking anywhere on the working area after choosing the paint bucket tool. Before we export the image, we can crop it. It's not hard as you can see. After you're done, just go to File. Press Save As. Then enter a name for the output. Choose PNG Format, and click Save, and then OK. So that's it for this tutorial. If you learned something new from today's video, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel right now. Just click on the button below this video. Are you gonna try to redo the same image? Or maybe a different one? Let me know by leaving a comment below. Right now.